Okay, so let's have a look at Ableton's inbuilt simpler and sampler. So what they are is they are audio samplers. So if you want to pull one into Ableton, you're first going to need a MIDI track because it is technically uh, something that's going to read MIDI information and then turn that into noise. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll just delete all these channels. I'm going to right click and insert a new MIDI channel, and then I'm going to grab a sampler and I'm going to pull it on there. Cool. Uh, and then it's going to drop down the bottom here so we can see what it looks like. Now, if I, um, so I've got it, the, my record arm uh, checked here and I've got my keyboard um, checked here. So if I play some keys on my keyboard, it should act as a, um, as a piano keyboard. So I'm just going to press some notes and you'll notice that down here, it's registering that MIDI information is coming into Ableton but it's not turning it into any sound. There's no sound coming out of the uh, other end of the plugin here. So what we need to do with the sampler is we actually need to put our own sounds into it and then we can play it. So um, I've got some uh, a vocal sample that I could use as an example. I got this uh, from Splice. So if we come down here and go into Vila, um, I've got some tones. So I've got this... You can hear, um, you can hear that um, vocal shot there. So it's just a simple R. So if I grab that and I drop it down into the sampler, you'll see that it's been loaded in there. So I can now play keys on my keyboard, and you'll notice that it's playing it, and it's also pitching it up and down, just like if you were playing keys on a sorry keys on a piano so if we zoom in i'm going to draw a little midi clip Control shift m to do that then double click on it to open it up and if we come over here and we draw a g in and we play that we'll notice that it's playing but it's not playing at the original pitch that it was so it's re-pitching it up so I can see that this um, this sample is actually the key of G. So if I want it to play a G, um, usually I would just write the note in and it would play it. But because of the way that a sampler works, it actually has, basically it compensates for if a um, sample is placed in there and it's different to what the piano roll would be. So if I dropped in this and the note of C, it wouldn't have been a problem because that's the neutral note. So what I need to do is I need to come down here and I need to change the root key on this uh, sample here and I need to change that to G. So the sample I've got in there and now if I play, it sounds like the original. So then I can play other notes and it's going to pitch it up properly. So if then I want to play A and I draw that in and then I want to go down to an F and then, uh, cool. So it's playing those notes and it's playing them correctly. So what we can do with the sampler is we can mangle our audio in all sorts of different ways. So um, from looking at the um, at it from a, a very basic point, we can change our loop start here. So we can actually start the sample halfway through or just at the end. So if we played that, so and I. Sorry, there's two two different starts here, and I was playing with the wrong one. So we've got a sample start, which adjusts where the sample is, and then we've got the loop start, if I was going to be looping things around. So let's adjust the sample start. Cool. So you can do all kinds of cool effects on your, your audio already. You can see some ways of messing with things. So we've got sustain mode here. So if we were holding down the key and we held it till it got all the way to the end, what would happen when it got to the end? So if we want it to just play a one shot, or if we want it to play and then uh, start through again, or if we want to play and then go back, so uh, play backwards. Uh, and then we've got our loop start and our loop end, and then we've got the crossfade as well. So we can say that we'll have something looping here, and then it's going to crossfade in and out of that. So it's nice and gentle. It's not abrasive because some sounds that you pop in there can sound quite abrasive when you do that then we've got detuning 
So that's going to detune it just uh, uh, just a small amount. And then we've got uh, our sample end here. And then we've got our release mode, how we want it to release. And then uh, we've got the parameters for doing all sorts of things with, with the release. Um, so they're the basic features here. I'm not going to get into anything too complicated in just this quick rundown. We've got the, uh, the pitch oscill oscillators here. Um, we've got the filters here. So if we want to filter things and then put envelopes on those filters. We've got modulation if we want to get involved with that. And then we've got our um, MIDI uh, tab here and our zone tab there. So some of these features are advanced and this is not an advanced tutorial. It's just getting you familiar with what a sampler is and how you use it in a very basic way. So next, I'll just quickly show you Ableton Simpler. So I'll navigate to it over here. I'll drop Simpler in and I'll generate a new channel for it. And I'm going to grab a different... Um, sample what's this cool that'll do chuck it in there and um, we've got this playing and if we press play it's pitched it down just like it had in the other one and it's playing through there so we've got controls tab the control tab here um, so that's got um, an envelope here and a filter here and then it's got what looks like an LFO here. And then we have our different modes. So we've got one shot. So if we just want to hit it and play it through once and not have it play again. Or we've got the classic loop, which will keep going back and forth. Or then we've got the slices, which will play different notes at different transient peaks. Cool. So that's how that works. We've got our warping functions. We haven't covered warp functions just yet with our Ableton tutorials. We've got um, where it's going to pick the transient from for this. And um, we've got our volume controls down here and our velocity controls. We've got transpose. So if we need to pitch that sample up or down, we can do it there. But with samples like percussive samples, we don't really need to worry about the pitch of it too much. We just need to make sure that it kind of glues in with the rest of our track. Um, so we've got... Um, the frequency controls down here and then the LFO controls here as well. And then we've got gain if we want to turn things up. And we've got uh, uh, playback, so whether we want it to be po poly or mono or whatever else. So that is simpler. So it's just a ba it basically it's just a watered down version of the sampler. And a sampler is a fully featured audio sampler where we can chuck our own samples in there and mangle them up and create all sorts of chaos with the effects that it's got in there. Now, I'll just preface this. This is a very basic tutorial, and these instruments can do a hell of a lot. But for now, that is your basic familiarization with that. Cheers. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider subscribing on YouTube, following on Facebook. Alternatively, if you'd like to support me financially, jump over onto Patreon and become a patron, or donate via PayPal. And don't forget, Starting a new endeavor, such as learning Ableton and electronic music production, can be extremely overwhelming, so take things day by day and believe in yourself. Thank you.